Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Solutions with Shanti. Yay. Happy Wednesday. Gosh, and we've just done a show on Aquarius Rising Africa with Jesse on the Rothschild. Well, we just had a big death, didn't we? Yeah, of Jacob. And she was obviously, Jesse was in the system and she was very much part of the Rothschilds. Um, just disgusting, you know, yeah. their children's hunts, um, all of that sort of thing, and their parties. And I mean, she was just explaining how what happens at these disgusting parties. So, if any of you have not watched that show, please go and watch on Aquarius Rising Africa. You know, it is so important that we can just see what these disgusting, despicable, they're not even human beings, and I'm sorry, they're not. When you when they go to these parties and you buy in, and you, you know, then you have one. I don't know. You might just end up on the menu, um, with you know, without even knowing that, that makes me you throw up. are. I literally felt like vomit come up in my mouth. Um, yeah, I I think about that. We think about all the wealth and the power they accumulated and how they got that wealth and power, and then that moment of death. I want to be like, oh, J Jacob, was it worth it? Like now that you're at your death. <laughs> Was it worth it? This this psychopathic behavior that you've that you've unleashed on humanity was it worth it? You know. Well, you know what I think. These guys. It's, what's interesting about the Rothschilds as well is that when you're looking back at the 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 history and the names, three two three hundred years ago, the same guys who were in power then of the family got the same names. It's like. Mm -hmm. This bloodline, like this whole reincarnation thing with this demonic entities and energies, obviously. I'm telling you, it's the same entities that are coming back in younger bodies, right? And, um, you know, for me, it's just how they, that's how they control power. I mean, in one of the, in one of the videos I was watching of them, um, Jacob Rothschild is saying, you know, we learned a long time ago to keep love in the family. So that you know, if we want to keep our fortune in the family, family. So the the well, the Rothschild so woman, ugly. yeah, the Roth. They're all in bread. <laughs> <laughs> the Rothschild. Well, they basically the 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 women are then if they if they marry outside of the family, then their inheritance is a pittance compared to if they marry in the family and you're marrying your cousin or your something. This like is that. what pisses me off too, Shanti, because we know the you know rules for thee, but not for me. Like, I'm sorry, I never want to marry my cousin. Like if I can trace us back to a, to a couple, I don't want to marry you. That's disgusting. But here's the thing, like in the United States, especially, I, I don't know about other countries, but in States, it's illegal. Like it is illegal to marry even I think yeah. it's like your fourth cousin, like after fourth cousin, it's, it's okay. But like they, this is illegal. Because yeah, it is illegal. So it's definitely legal. Yeah. I mean, it is illegal. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I mean, gross, it's... gross. Your cousin, your first cousin is like a step away from your sibling. Gross. <laughs> your, your parents were siblings. You got the same me, mom, people like that's gross. That's freaking gross. I just but I think there's that yeah that's why I mean I've also heard that you know you you're not attracted there's like a chemical in your blood or body that makes yeah. you not attracted to your siblings you know or something like that I don't remember exactly what that is but you're not supposed to be attracted to that but no wonder they all got their slurping foreheads and you no. know did they not learn from the Habsburgs the Habsburg chin like apparently not. Apparently not. Like, that's just gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're all like the hardcore Mormon Simona, you're right about that. It's just like so gross. But anyway, um, interesting show we did with Jesse on the Rothschild. So I think there'll be a lot more coming up on that. So for you guys who haven't seen that. Well, it kind of pieces what we're away. talking to about today, because at one point it's like even though these people are so wealthy, can do whatever they want to do. I would never trade my life for theirs because I don't want their yeah. life. Their life is disgust. It's disgusting to me. I'd rather be poor and be with the exactly. people 
then then have to live their life. I I don't think I could handle it. I think I would probably off myself. Like it's just so disgusting. It's so disgusting. It is. And I, you know when you're looking at this, I mean tonight we're obviously checking what well, to morning, to morning for you. <laughs> to morning and tonight. <laughs> um we're looking at the yacht girls, the dark side of the yacht girls. And I mean, this is something I recently came across. And again, you know, yeah, we're talking money and what's happening on these great big yachts. And, you know, I've got to tell you, I've had a TD beanie bit of experience from that, just from being in Thailand and, you know, um, coming across one or two men and being invited just for a day on their yacht to go and hang out and chill. And let me tell you something. This was, I mean, this was certainly not a monstrosity yacht, but a really nice one. Mm -hmm. And um, just hanging out at the top deck. But man, oh man, the minute these guys start drinking and they've got some booze in them, and let me tell you, their, their world revolves around alcohol, the ones I experienced anyway. Um, you're dealing with a different kind of animal there. That's for sure. I was like mortified, um, you know, seemingly decent folk, men in particular, right? Um, when you first start chilling and chatting and, you know, just hanging out and what have you. Boy, oh boy, two or three hours later, you've got a whole different ball game you're dealing with there. And you're so, on a boat. I mean, where, where are you going to go? Like, you can't run away from them. You're on a boat. Yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But very interesting. So what we, you know, what so I mean, really, you know, what the yacht girls is about. And for me, oh, it's so disturbing because if I had a daughter, but I have a granddaughter, it terrifies me that she is involved in the society the way that it is in this day and age thank god her mother is a very hands-on mother that is for sure um but honestly you know really what the yacht girls are and what they what they it's it's um wealthy models actresses generally the b-grade actresses and models and stuff like that who, ha who haven't really hit it big in the big time however the Kardashians and the Jenner sisters are big players in this game. So, um, and it's very interesting because let me just find here. There's a company, the Fashion Water Company, apparently, um, which is a front for prostitution. Now, they, you often find they sponsor or they give the water or whatever it is, but it's a front company for prostitution. And Tiger, uh, Tiger, whatever the Tiger, Kylie, Kylie Jenner, her ex, yeah. Tiger, yeah. that Tiger, whatever his surname is, he was at that stage the spokesperson for them. And the owner is none other than Chris Jenner. Now, it is a highly, highly rumored topic that Chris Jenner, I mean, we know when you look at Kim Kardashian, now this comes from Ray J who was her boyfriend at the time. And there's a contract that was signed. Apparently, Ray J swears blind that Kris Jenner, after Paris Hilton, her, her video went viral, which was a genuine accident. Yeah. Kim decided, or Kim and Chris uh, got together, and Chris decided that this was a good way to get famous. So she had them shoot that video no less than three times three times and to make sure that kim's best angles were shown in the sex tape that the two of them made and of course they then blamed him and it was a whole big debacle chris jenner went and took a lie detector test publicly i mean what a joke but um i absolutely believe that Me Chris too. Jenner Me was, was um, pimping her children out. And she, it's a known fact that both, um, I don't know about the, I don't know about Chloe and I don't know about Courtney, but I do know Kim, Kylie and Kendall um, were, were all part of this yacht scene. So what it is really is they go onto these mega yachts. They then uh, get invited and, and it's like a, 
absolute hookup culture, right? Um, Kim was apparently by the, I want to just see if this guy's, I made some, I brought some pics here. His name is Joe Lowe. Joe yeah. Lowe is a Malaysian businessman, right? And he apparently paid Kim $250,000 um, that she, and it's it was a well-known fact that she was coming off, I don't have a picture of him yet. No, I must have a picture. I did have a picture of him yet. That she was coming off the yachts um, with $250,000. Yeah, here he is. There we go. Kim Kardashian was given 250k in a cash in a trash bag after meeting Malaysian financer Joe Law in Las Vegas. Now he is well known for for entertaining the yacht girls. Is um, he the one that committed fraud? Am I getting yes. back? Am I getting back? Yes. My vocals getting back play. Yeah. Yes. Wing. No. no. Okay. Good. Yeah, there's a huge documentary about him. He was like actually. He, I mean, even like Lee, what's the Wolf of Wall Street or something? Didn't wasn't? Don't take this as fact, guys. Look all this up for yourself. But he was a, allegedly like giving finances to some big Hollywood movies as well, and that's the tie-in to yes. Hollywood. It's crazy. It's crazy, and it was all fraud. Look how I mean. Seriously, if the guy was a hunk, I can imagine that he would have gotten these girls. But I mean. A girl, uh, one of the models, Emily Emily Rydow, Rydakowski, that's her, that's her, that's right. I'm just sorry, Rydakowski, that's her name, who is a model. And she actually wrote a book apparently on this and has blown the, and has spilt the tea. So get your tea, girls. Has spilt the tea on all of this stuff, right? So... Uh, she was also paid $25,000 a night to spend, to, uh, uh, to attend the Super Bowl with this Joe Law guy. $25,000 for one night to attend the Super Bowl with this guy. And what it is really, it's a big hookup culture where you now get uh, passed around. They get all these mega wealthy people on these yachts. And often you're going to find that's where women meet these rich husbands or whatever it might be. And the guys obviously just have sags with whoever they want, however they want, and how often they and want. That's how, now, sometimes they can move up the Hollywood ladder by doing this too, right? Absolutely. They, can, they do yeah, move up the Hollywood ladder like that. And there's been a couple of – but that started with these Middle Eastern guys, these, these um, Arab guys. Yep. Because they have got the Hamas guys, right? It's, they're called the Hamas guys. Um, that they've got these mega, mega, mega wealthy or these huge yachts. And then they, and it apparently started, the whole thing started uh, a couple of years back when Prince Rainier married, who was his, who was his blonde wife, the one that got Grace, killed, Stephanie's Grace mother? Kelly. Grace Kelly, that's yeah. right. So then it became competition for these guys to get these Hollywood girls, right? So that's what happened. And then they started getting inviting these girls onto these yachts. And that's how. So it really is they are high-level prostitutes. Um, they, uh, some of them apparently they'll, they'll go, but then in the evenings they get sent away, like off the yacht. Then they like six of them are sleeping in a bedroom in some dingy hotel, right? So they're there during the day. And then they get sent off. And then some of them hook up. Others others just want to run away. But their passports get taken, invariably. These girls' passports get taken. I mean, it is on another level. I mean, 20 so, grand a night think, to think my boyfriend gets it for free. Exactly. <laughs> I don't charge. <laughs> exactly. I don't, exactly. Henry, I don't charge. <laughs> yeah. But isn't it crazy? Because now you're looking. Um, and then, of course, let's talk about Meghan Markle. Yep. Because she's the big scandaler when it comes to this. I was about to say, speaking of princesses and American actresses turning into princesses. Oh, yeah. Now, have a look at this picky pick, 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 yeah, okay? Because this, and this is all just recently this is recent tea being spoke, right? Okay. This is one of the things that Meghan Markle has been trying to keep secret since forever. 
And um, I have to say, let me just see this here. Da, 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 da. Um, she was. Hang on, let me pop. Let me pop these, this up. In my opinion, these yachts are like floating Epstein Islands, except they the are. Get paid. And in, interestingly, it took, mentioning that's what I was actually looking for about Epstein Island was that that is why she was because before she met Harry, she was on these yachts, and there you have her and Prince Andrew. So there are pictures of her with Epstein and Prince Andrew. And that's also from these yachts. Apparently, she's a cheapy girl. Though. She only charges like $100 an hour. So, yes. So, she was, so she was considered a B-grade actress, right? Yep, she was so, in a show called Suits. Yeah. Yes. So, she was apparently easy to get, right? Um, so, yeah, the, she, she charges $100 an hour. So, she was an easy one. And, and rumor has it. And now, guys, everything I'm saying is alleged, okay? <laughs> um, rumor has it that that's where she actually met Harry. I know. I was about was, to say, so that whole story of them being set up on a blind date, y'all, that's not true. No. Oh, shocker, that's not true. When you're watching their, video, their interviews, on two different interviews, they said two different stories. So you got to know immediately that's a lie, right, that, about how they met. Um, so yeah, and and I, I agree, Lisa D. Um, that the she's clearly blackmailing the royal family. Yes, and I do that, and this is also why there was a lot of rumors and things saying that um, they should definitely not be having her in the family. But and did you see the picture of the queen's face at their wedding? No, <laughs> and I don't have a chat, but there's that picture. I mean, the queen was like. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was very, very pissed at this this whole thing. Um, I will but, say there is a really funny stand up that Chris Rock does about Meghan Markle and her complaining about the royal family. I can't say what he says because it'll get this video zapped. But if you guys look at that stand up, he talks about Meghan Markle and the royal family yeah. and all the clay. It's hysterical what he says. So, well, there she is again, um, having some fun with some boy. And these were all just recent pictures that, of course, was better not seen. There she is again. And they usually be hanging out topless and drinking and doing whatever. And I think this is her. I am. Yeah, I could like be her. mistaken. Um, but I think that could be her as well. But you know what? I got a very, very interesting um, message. And I'm going to read this to you guys from one of the viewers who actually worked on these yachts. She worked on yachts. And what's disturbing is yes, my nieces and nephews actually work on these yachts as well. Oh, yes, yeah, another one with Megan. Um, there she is with some dude. And I know this girl, I can't remember her name now, the Blondie, but she is uh, well known for being on these yachts as well. Oh, there's Kim again. And there's a picture of Kim on the yachts as well. Uh, Kim Kardashian was apparently on these yachts for like 10 years. She was yeah. doing the yacht girl thing for like 10 freaking years. And Kendall Jenner as well. And yes, somebody, I want to just actually show you, this is a picture, maybe. <laughs> now, somebody was lip reading, and this was a TikTok video. Somebody was lip reading Kendall. And she was saying, yeah, this was in Dubai as well. And um, she was saying to these people her first two times were horrible but this was fun she was there for the opening at the, of the atlantis hotel or something Did we talk about what what allegedly like it's not just that these girls have to sleep with these guys but it's there's like horrific things there was i was telling shanti off camera there was a reddit post that my boyfriend read a while ago and he's pretty tough he's been awake for a while but he couldn't finish it it was making him so sick to his stomach um, this anonymous, like, 20-something-year-old girl who was a yacht girl, she doesn't do it anymore. She took the money and ran, listed everything that she had to do. I don't. I can tell you right now, I'm tough. I don't think I would have survived the thing yeah. that you're asking this person to do. It's horrific. It's, it, is, it is absolutely... Now, I know that my nephew, my one nephew, has been, has had Bill Gates 
on the yacht he works on a couple or one of them he did work on i don't know if it's still the same one i really don't know i can't keep up with these kids but um bill gates was definitely on there um but i want to just read you guys this Hi, Shanti. I hope to be able to give you some insight. I'll try to make the sh uh, show tonight, but it's, uh, but it's we usually way past my bedtime here in Australia. I started working on the yachts in 2000. I quickly learned that looks matter a lot, no matter how qualified or professional one was. Being a bit chubby for their liking, I struggled to find employment. Once I got a job, the grim reality of bitchy owners' wives and mistresses hit home. Most day... Most days, one just grins and bears their foul moods and pickiness of why the sheets on the bed were not ironed correctly or why there was a drop of water in the sink, etc. On one, on one yacht, there was a carpet raking duty, which involved being stuck in a closet all day with a carpet brush. Every time someone walked past, one had to quickly come out of the closet and rake the carpet so that it looked not walked upon then disappear again. I mean, look at that. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, Who's even a human, being, it? a human being is forced to sit in a closet all day? And rake and rake the carpet when I somebody is I'd rather have that job than what the other girl's got to do. So I'd rather take that job. I'll yeah, if I was forced to, I'd, I'd, I'd rake the carpet. <laughs> yeah, I'd way rather do that. I I would get real fat real real quickly if that meant I didn't have to do what those girls had to do. <laughs> no, there'd be no yoga on the deck for me. No, I'd be eating all the bad stuff just to not have to do what those girls got to do. And I, I would yeah. break that carpet. <laughs> Crazy. In 2003, I was interviewed on then Paul Allen's yacht Octopus, 125 meter Larson exploration lot, yacht. Many things didn't sit right with me, and although I was picked out for the position, I declined. Questions involved religious and political views, if I was fully inoculated, etc. I later found out from a friend who took another junior position on board that all crew had, had matching sunnies and jewelry and had to, uh, that they had to wear. She was certain that the watches then already included GPS trackers. A deckhand who got left behind in a port after the yacht left called the captain to inform him that he missed the ship and the captain said he's aware of it and knew the precise location of the decky. I mean, what the hell? The same friend told me about Billy Gates and Paul Allen having breakfast together where, uh, where they, in 2003, discussed microchipping the populace. Bill said we're not quite there yet, but in 20 years, everyone will have one way or the other. It will have one, one way or the other. And that was 21 years ago. I mean, how insane is that? I've witnessed a very timid owner's wife being grabbed and fondled in a sexual manner against her will by Harvey Weinstein. I saw it and came to a rescue, making up an excuse that she ur urgently needed to see the chef in the gallery regarding some canapes to be served. One, char uh, one charter we had, now my, this is just horrible. One charter we had Romanian property tycoons groom young girls as prostitutes on board. We had to clean cabins after they left, uh, after their grooming session. I've never been so sick of the thought of what those girls literally went through. We had to, we had, we literally had blood and poop everywhere, which needed cleaning up. One girl while in, uh, while in shore asked the chief stew to ask the captain to hand her passport back so she could escape, which implicated us heaps, but it needed to be done. I mean, can you believe that? What these girls go through? That's what the Reddit these... girl said, that they're forced to eat, like, their fecal matter, other, the, the male's fecal matter. Um, I mean, it's just, if they throw up in the process, they're then forced to eat their own vomit back up again. I mean, it's, it's and that's, like, not even the half of it. Uh, like I said, my boyfriend could not even get, he had to stop reading it, because it was just too much. Too much. And this I'm thinking, like, you know, the watch might have had a GPS, but even diamond earrings or any jewelry could have a GPS. Mm -hmm. And even though I know I haven't been zippity doo dod, I got one of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
and they've kind of made made us so reliant on on these on these electronic things haven't they it's like yep. how do you survive in the world nowadays if you don't have internet if you don't have a cell phone i mean you know although i've got to say i know people who are on no social media yep. and they're very happy so it might be a good thing okay well let's carry on i once vacuumed up a small mountain of cocaine worth a big mountain of cash it belonged to no other than Naomi Campbell. I inquired with the captain what to do about that, and he said, vacuum it up. So another Stu and I did. When we, when we questioned the captain of what would happen if she says someone stole her coke, he would, ask her, uh, he would ask her to call the police to report the theft of her illegal coke. <laughs> the sad thing is that young girls, 18... Uh, and uh, 18, 19, and early 20s want to work on the yachts to be surrounded by these celebrities, etc. To keep up with the yacht owners' wives, all their salaries go into fancy couture sunnies and shoes. They are Botox to the max. Some owners even pay for their stews, manicures, pedicures, Botox, etc. Working as yacht crew is really modern-day slavery. It sounds all fab and glam, living the luxe life on board a 100-meter yacht, but the reality is that one works 95 hours a week on average, no time off. If the owner doesn't like you, you boot it off, even if it means somewhere, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Captains usually try to do the right and kind thing of paying for the flight back to where one was hired from, but don't count on it. Many times I walked away from a yacht where the owner hadn't paid wages in months, cutting my losses and finding new employment. Owners will spend thousands of dollars on a Dolce, uh, Dolce & Gabbana baby onesie or buy every year the latest TVs for the cabins and discard literally new, uh, new stuff but, and literally new stuff but not pay crew their wages and plead poverty or bankruptcy. Let that sink in. Girls willingly will seek out yachts and haul themselves out to yacht owners. And just like yacht crew will be discarded, we're no longer pleasing to them. Because you're not a human being to them. That. You're not a human being to them. It's um, and, and that's that's what they they and it's like fishing, right? Because they put all these pictures on social media of these like uber wealthy celebrities and i'm sorry like i know the kardashians can pay for whatever they want to pay for they can do whatever they want they have so much money i would never trade my life for theirs never never i don't no, want their life enough. i don't want it. it 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 seems now that we know all that we know when i see these uber a-list celebrities i feel sick to my stomach like i physically feel sick to my stomach because of what they've gone through what they've had to do and how dehumanizing it is I was telling Shanti, like, you would have to disassociate. If you yeah. are a person with a soul and you're going through this, you would have to disassociate in order to survive it. And that's what they want, too. That's part of that training, right, is the disassociation. Um, right. And we, gla exactly. we glamour. We, we, you know, now in, in the age of social media, you can just hop on your Instagram and see the yacht girls. And they, they, have, they look like they have this glamorous life, you know, um, if I had a daughter, I'd probably just tell her over and over again, you swell on a yacht to dissuade her. <laughs> like, you swell on boats, honey, like just to dissuade her from. <laughs> from doing it, yeah. No, I know. It's absolutely no. crazy. It's crazy. And you know what What? Uh, what they do is often between gigs, because remember what we were saying, it's like, Usually B-list uh, list actresses and models, these very, very pretty models who, and in between gigs uh, where they're maybe not hired or employed or whatever it is, they then would go on these yachts and this is how they pay their bills, is to go and earn $25,000 a night with uh, this uh, chubby Malaysian fraudster. Um, whatever his name is, that one there. Yeah, you're not yachting with like someone that looks like Brad Pitt, are you? Joe Lowe. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, that's you're, just. You're yachting with someone who looks like Prince, with Prince Andrew or someone who looks like Prince Andrew. Like. <laughs> exactly. You, you have to put, I mean, I cannot. Like. Gross. Yeah. Gross. I, I just, um, but isn't it, I mean, I've heard the rumors. I don't know if it's true or not. I try to take everything with a grain of salt that Meghan Markle is like a, is like an Obama where they were created by the three letter agency kind of 
So it makes sense that she's able to do things almost without. Yeah, I have heard that about her. I find it very interesting. You know, she was obviously groomed for this position. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, there's no way that anyone in the royal family would have agreed to have her in there had she not been groomed for that position. Um, I actually heard um, Harry in an interview the other day, also when I was kind of like, listening to the stuff and he's like saying yes everyone says megan's a yacht girl he says that's not true da, da, da. but i mean there's ample there's ample sort of proof that she is i mean i don't know you know we've got to always con continue to to talk about these things being alleged and you're right dragonfly money definitely can't buy class unfortunately and you know what it's like bryce we're talking about those organic portals this for me yes. These girls are typical of that organic yeah. portals. They are got yeah. the boobs, they got the ass, they got the bodies, and they know how to flaunt it. And that that's all their life consists of. And that's yeah. why there's nothing more in life for them other than earning high money, having some high flying apartment, and, and that you can snort the whole day. I mean, yeah. why would you want that? And well, you know, it's just it's interesting you bring that up because I got an email about that. And I think maybe just to recalibrate that, because I think you're right, because when we're looking at the wall of one where this comes from, you when, you, when you're a person with a soul, so you're not an organic portal. So organic portals don't have souls, basically. They have like tiny minuscule, just lower chakras. So they, they're kind of vapid. They don't have, they can have intellect, but they don't have the depth of emotion and the complex thought that a person with a soul would have because a sold person will feel something emotional. If you're on one of those islands or those yachts and you see a child get hurt or an animal get hurt, you're going to have a visceral reaction if you have a soul because there's compassion, there's empathy. But what we have to remember, you guys, is that only sold people can make the choice to go positive or negative negative so yeah. all of these in my that's what's so disgusting to me these yacht owners these um psychopaths that inflict this pain more than likely they have souls and more yeah. than likely and that's what makes me sick to my stomach is because if i'm also a sold person if you guys watching if you're watching this you're probably a sold person too and i know for me that I would never be able to emotionally. I mean, I don't even eat meat. You know, like, like I can't yeah. handle it. I, I don't. My dog gets away with anything because I don't discipline. I'm the good cop because I, I'm so sensitive to that. There's to think about that and to think about me making that choice to do what Hillary Clinton does because we know that she is also someone that picked. A particular path that's what's disgusting to me and they use yeah. so so sold people who are on the negative path who are serving the negative side and the negative demons the fourth entity negative entities will use organic portals to their disposal because they can and exactly. that's why i think they manipulate these yacht girls and i think the yacht girls that we see speaking out the ones putting things on reddit the ones you know, speaking out are the ones that probably had souls and had to leave yeah. because they could like the woman that messaged you because they just could not handle it. They could. You yeah. Know? Um, and so and so it's an interesting thing because um, that, okay, Angie, Angie, I was just thinking about you today. I was going to text you. That's a lot of three minutes for a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Not> you. <laughs> for once in your life, as just a female, you'd be hoping it for it to be in a real quick yeah. three minutes. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But also, you know what's interesting? Again, going back to Chris Jenner, I mean, I find it appalling. This she has. I mean, we. Know, I mean, anyone on this platform knows that Chris Jenner is a witch from hell, yeah. right? And, and so are her daughters, Obvious. right? If we just look at how she's done, her daughters are dirty. I mean, she was pimping Kylie out to this tiger guy uh, before Kylie was even, like, really of age, right? And, yeah, on Kylie's uh, 22nd birthday, allegedly, she spent, again, the, the her birthday on Joe, Lo, uh, Joe Law's yacht and was apparently paid $500,000. 
for that. I mean, can you actually believe it? Okay, but um, question, Kylie, I said this off camera to you, Shanti, like, when is enough enough? Like, don't you have enough money? Do you really have to, like, be the, do, to, 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 to do this, this, you have enough. You have enough money. Yeah. You can't, I think, you know, with these people, it's just never enough. It, it's more, it's more about what they have. I mean, we're forever hearing if you, if you were, and sometimes I do watch like stuff on them, not their shows, but you know, like uh, sort of uh, uh, people having conversations about them because it's interesting for me yeah. what goes on, right, in terms of that as well. And you're hearing how much. Uh, Kim is the most wealthy, then there's Kylie, then Chris, then the other one, then the other one, then the other one, you know, and who's got the most money in this family? So I think it's not even about what they can spend or what they can't spend anymore. It's really just about what they have. That, and they, it's the it's ego. Like value and yes. this external value. I don't even know how much money my sister has. I've never asked her. I've never even thought to ask her. You know, that doesn't matter to me. And um, yeah, it's, 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 Oh, it's so gross. It's just, and I know, I know, I, I mean, I feel sorry for these girls that have been subjected to this at such a, such a young, such a young age, you know, and, yeah. and here's the thing, like, I don't, none of us, none of us watching right now have a fraction of the wealth that people like the card out there in their own tax bracket. But I guarantee yeah. you, our life is way, way more fulfilling and way happier. More, yeah, definitely happier because we don't, you know, I, I could not imagine being intimate with a man for pay. First of all, I, I, that would that would horrify me. That would make me feel so gross. It's all it's like these deals they do, yeah. you know, and they'll come off there like Kim was then in uh, Bahrain. I think it was somewhere else opening up uh, this uh, guy's uh, a, a, a chain of restaurants called Millions of Milkshakes. So she was in there. I mean, there's obviously a deal they do. So she gets paid that. And because she has such a pulling capacity of the crowds, she would then go and open up his chain of, 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 of restaurants. That's why this particular one is called Millions of Milkshakes. Um, which <laughs> no, well, I don't her know. milkshake definitely brings all the boys to the yard, but it's not the attractive <laughs> ones. Yeah. Um, Kendall, I mean, Kendall, you know, I must say, I always thought like out of, out of all these ones, Kendall was, was probably the most uh, cool, but it like turns her. out not, you know, she's also been pumped and done all the stuff. I mean, they are just one big plastic family uh, uh, body, all of them. They, I mean, they've got more plastic in them than anything else. And that well, was that it's crazy. Kind of thing, though, though, Shanti, I'm like thinking about like we, we've done a show on plastic surgery. I've only had one little plastic surgery on my ear from when I had ear surgery. I'm trying to find, I can't even remember. It's this one right here, this side. But, you know, in our world, to have a good body, to have, to, to look healthy, we put time into ourselves. We put energy, we put hard work into our practices, into our health, into eating right. Yeah. How we have this culture where it's quick you know if you want to lose weight just go have some liposuction or get on the ozempic which is a uh, horrific i mean i don't know if you've heard of the ozempic Chantel. Um, yeah there's a big thing and, a, and apparently again that's what uh both chloe i mean if you've seen chloe kardashian lately i mean it's scary how much that girl has changed she's with her lips like this she's just a walking plastic factory well, again is everywhere and everybody's doing yeah. ozempic now it's Using diabetes medicine if you do not have diabetes what are you doing to yourself they, had, they were having shortages of ozempic in yeah. uh, recently because of all this big diet fad because it makes you lose weight but the side effects are horrendous yes i was the looking side at effects are cancer area. and dying and and whatever yeah. else right so, and yet they don't care. They'll take it because uh, they want to be thin. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. We've got, we've also got Jessica, the cryptic huntress in the chat. I just noticed she's awesome. She's a remote viewer, Shanti. She's awesome. Um, right. She's great. I've, 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 I've been doing some shows with her. She's awesome. And yeah, I'm just looking at the comments now. Um, it's, it's, oh, Deborah, you're sharing with your book club. That's awesome, Deborah. I'm, I love, I love a good book club. See, why can't the Kardashians just join a book club? That's way more fun <laughs> than having to give a 
BJ to some nasty old guy. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. I don't even like exactly. doing that to men that I love. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's something you do. I mean, it's like, but you know, this whole hookup culture that, I mean, it, that 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 is happening in the last specifically, let's say, 20 years, 15 to 20 years, the whole hookup culture has magnified and kind of blown itself out of proportion. I mean, okay, there's always been a hookup culture, but, you know, it's completely taken away from relationships because, you know, when a woman, when a woman generally sleeps with a man, or has sex with a man, it's because she feels emotionally bonded. Yep. And really, there's two reasons we generally, why we created to have sex. A is to procreate, obviously, and B is to emotionally bond with someone you love. I don't say you've got to wait until you're married or anything. I know some cultures say that. But I think that if you're at least having sex with someone you love, it's an emotional bond. It's a connection. It's it's kind of like the 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 extension of your feelings. Yep. And nowadays there's there's none of that anymore. Well, you you know, girls are that. proud of being sluts. They and I mean I hear them. I hear I listen to this stuff a lot. They are proud proud of being little sluts. They love it because they like the attention. And you speak to these girls, not one of them have got fathers or strong, healthy father figures in their lives. So, you know, it is really a shame because, yeah, we, you know, we, we are watching young women destroy themselves and they're too arrogant to realize that they're doing that. They think they're all empowered and they're into feminism and this is all girl power and what have you. You know, it is such a self-destructive thing that these young women are doing and it's oh. actually so bloody sad. You see, I, I love what Lisa D just said. That's why I could never have been a hooker. It's not the good looking guys coming to see you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then that is like hand job on the on the massage bed. <laughs> no, the good looking guys, the good looking guys can get a girl, right? Like they don't need to pay for yeah. it. Well, and that's the thing too, what, what people neglect to talk about, Shanti, is is yeah, in this like hookup culture, it's almost been and I'm the same way. Like I, I don't believe in purity culture at all. I think purity culture is is very dangerous. But at the same time, we're confusing hookup culture with girl power. You can be a powerful, integral woman without Certainly. sleeping with everybody. You know, I'm in a committed relationship. Yeah. The only and that's and honestly, and maybe this is me showing my age and my my forties now. If I were to have to start over again, that's the scariest thing as another person seeing me naked. Like it's kind of nice yeah. when you get to that point in a relationship where it doesn't matter anymore, and and you know it's it's you know you, do, you know you, you yeah you enjoy you enjoy the space you're comfortable with the person you're yeah. with your best friend you you know you're in that place where 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 you know you you are comfortable with yourself and your partner. Angie, I'm just listening look, looking at what you're saying. Yeah, when I modeled, I had a terrible, scary encounter with one of these types of men. Seemed he was a scout for them. Big old fat gross man yeah i can well believe that you probably encounter those quite a bit and because they have money right they think that um they they own you and that they think their money is going to get you to compromise on your values and sadly it does get a lot of people a lot of young women to compromise on their values well they're also I mean, thinking you on your innocence too yeah, they're banking absolutely. on your innocence. They know that you don't know the full details, and they know that right. if they put you on a boat in the middle of international waters, where are you going to go? You know. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, yeah, you know, and I think it's crazy, you know, and I'm just again looking at some of these names who've been. It's Kim Kardashian, Kylie and Kendall Jenner, Haley Bieber, right? The one that's married to old Justin. Selena Gomez, mm -hmm. Bella Hadid, all these beautiful, powerful young these women. Are, are child actors too. They start off as Disney kids or Nickelodeon yes. kids. I mean, when we're looking at Britney Spears as well, I mean, although she's not on yet as as a as a yacht girl, but I mean, what that poor child went through, and I don't believe this is the same Britney around anymore. I think something happened to her um, maybe two or three years ago. 
when when she was uh, having that court case with her father, or whatever it was, yeah. I think something happened to her then. Either they took her out or she's gone. Uh, there's a program called Gone with the Wind program now where they're taking a lot of these celebrities and, they, you know, the whistleblowers and stuff, and there's a program or, or yeah, a program called Gone with the Wind where they're taking them, they're hiding them. It's like... Um, when you when you hide your identity, what's Witness that called? Protection. Witness protection. Yeah. Yeah. So that sort of thing. Well, especially if they're if it, these witnesses or these victims are assets to filing charges, they have information. You know, I mean, look at Jessica Simpson. She's another one. You, you know, from from yeah. I don't know, look how much she's changed. She's exactly. Another one. You know, yeah. it's disgusting, and that's what I can't stand. Is the it's also you know we we see this like pseudo um these pseudo like feministic movements which aren't even really because we know the feminism movement was was bs anyway but the way they treat we know the way they treat women is so disgusting right we we're seeing that with our you know it triples out trickles down into everything with women's sports with all this stuff going on and yet these 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 b-list celebrities trying to make it are basically degrading themselves yeah, to get them and to do and 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 to and you know to be seen and to be caught by someone. That's the whole thing is to be seen and to be hooked by one of these wealthy businessmen. And they did mention some names in some of the stuff I watched. I can't actually remember, but yeah, um, some of these big, uh, not necessarily celebrities, but these people that are married to these very wealthy businessmen, and they become these like trophy wives, right? So. You now basically succumb to whatever. I mean, I don't want to think what they have to do to become that trophy wife, you know. But that's what they really have to do, you know. So, how much did I say that Kylie that Kylie Jenner yeah. was paid by that guy? Yeah. It's five million dollars. Oh, I don't know what else. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Yeah, no, five million dollars. Five million dollars on a single night for a yacht from that J J Law guy. I mean, he seems to be quite a player with the chicks but i mean well he's in prison now isn't he <laughs> i'm sure he's having lots of fun there i'm sure I think he's the yacht girl now shanti don't drop the show <laughs> I, was gonna say, I think those tables have turned babe <laughs> that's some instant karma right there i think i think he's the there you have it the prison yeah yacht absolutely girl on the prison yard and you know the thing with these guys is they probably have when you're listening to what uh, one of the viewers, when when I was reading that that uh, SMS or that message early on, where she was saying how these Romanian property tycoons were grooming these girls to become prostitutes, oh, I don't want to think what these poor girls had to go through. Um, so, because these guys have so much money, um, they think they can do whatever the hell they want to right they think and so they own you they will make you they will humiliate you they will make you do the sickest things for your money right so it is just absolutely i mean paris hilton is also one that was on the yachts right uh yeah um i'm just looking at other names uh that uh, emily radikowski she's the one that actually wrote the book she was a model in fact she was in that What's that guy? Um, oh, man. <laughs> if I don't write names down, there's so many names that I have to remember nowadays. Blurred, something blurred, that that song. Blurred, blurred something. Lines. Blurred lines. Without she was the model lines. in that song. Okay. Yeah, she yeah she was that model with the dark hair. That's actually her there. Um, that's a song about rape, basically, is what that is. That's, that's yeah. the song, what that song's about. And she was saying that that guy, the singer, was actually sexually assaulting her. Robin Thicke. Mm. For the Americans watching um, this show, Growing Pains, the father from the show Growing Pains, that's his son in real life, Robin Thicke. Alan Thicke was the actor. That's his Alan Thicke, that's his name. That's his name. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. It's disgusting. But, it, that's song about but it's race. really... You when we talk about that, just going back, it's uh, the, the 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 beginning, the start of these yacht girl of these yacht expeditions was this Hamas guys. 
the wealthy Hamas leaders that started this whole yachting industry. And um, it's for the filthy rich, and you know, it's obviously the finest money can buy. Um, and they dominate the globe, boy, with their money. And of course, they will only buy the finest uh, of uh, wealthiest uh, uh, that money can buy for them. And, you know, these guys, I don't know, these Arabs are a different breed when they have i agree mm. i i was listening i was telling you i was listening to an old um a, a youtube from a, an a, air, a person who used to work um airlines who's french a very uh, heavy french accent and she talked about flying through the middle east and gave some of her antidotes about it and i i fly through dubai a lot to get to in fact that's basically all i the route i take is from to dubai then to india that's the stopping point and when i first started going through dubai I actually really enjoyed the, the airport. It's a silent airport. Um, it was, but my, my last few trips, I started to feel really uncomfortable, even in the Dubai airport. There was something very unsettling. All of a sudden, I just got very unsettled being a female truck because I travel most of the time. I'm traveling by myself to India. Yeah. You know, and I'm not leaving the airport, but still, I, I started just all of a sudden get very uncomfortable. Um, and I would just go kind of sit at my gate because I and usually I just because it's a beauty. I mean, it's a lot of money, so you can walk around and see these beautiful shops and stuff. And the in the airport, it's like its own little. How huge is that airport? My gosh, oh, that oh, Dubai yeah. airport! And it's yeah. a quiet airport because they do do the call to prayer for for the Muslims, which you know if you're you just don't stop and pray, you just keep going. But but and I was the first few trips totally fine, but then all of a sudden I started. All of a sudden something like shifted, and I started to get so uncomfortable, and I started to realize the gravity of the people around me and here I am this one by myself and I would just go and go sit in my gate and just wait for my flight because I just it, it got very unsettling after a while you know the best airport for me um what's it uh, Dakar Dakar Qatar Airways where does uh, that go yeah. to it? that to for me is the best airport well, I love, see, I, I really like flying Emirates, which is a Middle Eastern airline. They're, yeah. they're, they're very spacious. And so you have to either fly through Abu Dhabi or Dubai. And I, I always just had the route to, to Dubai. Um, I've never done the Abu Dhabi, but um, I had a friend, a Canadian friend who flew through um, Iraq, actually, from Canada. And it was so traumatic for her that on her flight back, she forfeited her ticket and bought a whole new ticket just to not have to go through Iraq again because it was so traumatic for her. Um, yeah, just being in the airport as a female. So I believe that I believe that. I mean, I usually travel on my own as well, but I mean, it's just like yeah, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't have your wits about you. Hello, Carmen. Nice to see you. But anyway, so I think in in ending this, you know, for me, I always like to find solutions, solutions to things. So it's like, how do we actually change this as a culture? You know, I mean, it's it's so crappy to read this about a young woman. You know, at the end of the day, they're young, often vulnerable, like often groomed. Yeah. You know, it's it's really, you know, I'm I'm a great believer in the hundred monkey syndrome. So when we start changing it, that whole, you know, it kind of starts tilling the soil, so to speak. Yeah. That, you know, starts changing things for others as well so i would start the first thing i want to say bryce and i mean i'd like your input here as well is we need to start viewing wealth and power through different lenses 100 percent. i mean what is wealth really your wealth it's money is just a facet of abundance and yes we currently live in the world where money is important and we need to pay our rent and blah 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 but your true wealth really is your health because if you don't have a healthy body and i mean anyone who's been in pain or discomfort knows it steals your joy it robs you of your joy it puts you in that place where you are just consumed with pain whether it's physical pain emotional pain mental pain whatever you are consumed by pain and you cannot find your joy so you know your wealth really is your physical mental emotional well-being so we have to put into place for ourselves 
the spiritual happiness, you know, and for each person, that's different, right? And I mean, I'm not going to lecture to anyone what your spiritual denomination has to be. But um, each person has uh, their own way of creating joy. And it has to start with yourself. And again, you know, I love the Eastern philosophies. I love the Eastern teachings. And they're no different to any other teachings. I just love the way they are taught. And, you know, the Eastern teachers will talk about ahimsa. Yeah. Ahimsa is nonviolence. And that nonviolence is not about necessarily being nonviolent or vegan or whatever. That's that's an that's an a byproduct already of what's happening here. Ahimsa begins, it's nonviolence of the mind. The should have, could have, why didn't I have, what have you, the fighting with yourself. I'm so fat, I'm so ugly, oh my God, look how gross I am. Um, you know, whatever, looking at yourself in the mirror and not liking what you see. That, that, that's where we have to begin the ahimsa, the nonviolence. Yeah, it's having a so, healthy relationship with yourself. If you have self-respect and you have a healthy relationship with yourself, you're never going to, well, I'm not saying never going to get yourself in those situations, but if you find yourself in those situations, you're going to be able to put bound, healthy boundaries up with the way that you Absolutely. are treated. You know, and, and instead of idolizing girls who are only value they put out, I'm not saying it's the only value that they have, but the only value they display is their looks. Why don't we go back to looking at women for young girls, women who have made waves in other areas of our yeah. society, like through, you know, women who are changing laws, women who are starting like Angie uh, has her own uh, pickle business that she started. Like, why don't we talk about the greatness of a woman in that area instead of only using your assets as a woman, no, no pun intended, you know, to get what you want. It's, it's, you know, that, that should be something that, again, I'm very much against purity culture. I think purity culture itself, I, I have a huge problem with it. I grew up in that you know, that's, that's terrible. It's shown to have very horrific abuse on, on young girls. However, not shaming women for their sexuality, but, but having them understand that that's a gift given to you to be shared in a sacred way with someone you love, like take away the whole yeah. marriage thing, whatever, but with someone that you actually love and that loves you in return. And that's where your power comes from. You know, it's, it's, um, I, I it's, it's upsetting. You know, I, I think about my, I, uh, Bobby just did my dad's mom's family line. And my great, great grandmother was one of the most highly educated women in the state of Georgia for the 1800s. Like, why can't we look at that and be like, wow, that's so cool. Versus these women like Meghan Markle laying on a yacht with her top off in Chanel sunglasses. And that's what we idolize. Exactly. It's changing exactly. the narrative here a little exactly. bit. Exactly. It's so true because we've been taught how to be dumb. Yeah. You know, that is really being dumbed down because it's how much do we have and do we have Jimmy Choo's? It's what labels do we wear, you know, that sort of stuff. And that has to change because mostly when you're looking at that stuff, there's a lot of animal cruelty involved, yeah. you know. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no regard for life. There's really no regard for you as yeah. long as you are paying money uh, that lines their pockets, again, to buy their Louis Vuitton bags or whatever. I mean, it's insane to me to see how excited people get when they're over a stupid Chanel bag. I mean, like, what are you talking about? I've never, you know? my purse is a backpack because <laughs> I teach. So I literally have a backpack that I carry with my stuff in it, and that's my purse. That's literally my purse. You know, and that's the thing. When we learn how, and you know, the, the, this is another thing, this non-attachment. You know, it's beautiful to have your pretty nails and your nice little trinkets. I love a beautiful home. Honestly, I love my carpets, my Persian carpets and things. I like to have nice things that surround me. I like to come home and feel comfortable. Absolutely. I'm not going to lie about that. But really, at the end of the day, when it comes to attachment, am I attached to that? No, I really am not. And that's what we really, I think for me, has been a process as well. Although I've never been brought up um, 
materialistic at all. I mean, I'm one of six kids, right? I got hand-me-downs from my sisters. You know, <laughs> I had a pile of clothes like this with all my sister's bloody. It was like, I don't want that shit in my life. <laughs> you know? So no, you're not often going to find me shopping in a thrift shop. I'm not into second-hand clothes at all. But I like, I mean, I know what I like. I have people who make the clothes I like. Um, there's certain styles that are unique to me. I like that about myself. I must say, I like my uniqueness. Um, in terms of that. So I will buy my own fabric that I like and I'll get somebody to make my stuff for me. We that's do, what I like. That, we do that a lot. And that's such a good point, Shanti, about changing the narrative too. We do that a lot as well. Like we have, you know, the Ashtanga practice is a really sweaty practice. And so if you go to the main shawl and you have to have your yoga mat and a mat carpet, like a towel to put over your mat and like a hand towel. And there's these big corporations that sell, you can buy, you can wholesale these, these towels for your mat. But you know what we do? We order carpets from a family in India who makes it themselves. We do yeah. as a business, as at our shala, we put orders into them and they ship it to us and we sell their stuff because we know the family. It's homemade. Right. There's, there's and you're supporting, you're supporting a family and you're supporting someone to go for ballet lessons. And you're yes, supporting exactly. this child. And you your know? carpet you have for your mat isn't some like mass produced crap. It's individually made by someone's own hands. And how cool is that? It's like when you make food, like like when Angie makes her pickles, she makes them with her hands, like that that love that's put into it. And yeah, we and we just send whenever we need more. Todd just emails he emails the the guy and we send a PayPal and then we get it shipped. And I will tell you, my dog, who's a rescue from India, we get like most people boxes all the time at the front door. You know, we get big wads of toilet paper for the business, all that kind of stuff in boxes. He's never interested. But when that box comes from India, he is all over smelling it. It's so interesting because he remembers. He remembers. Yeah, he knows. That's, he knows. that's, that's his that's, home that's, tip. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that smells familiar to him. But yeah. That's that shifting, that being very conscious. And I know we can't do it with everything. Like, I get that. Like, there's some stuff that's unavoidable. But you know, the yacht girls are just as a symptom of a bigger problem. Yeah. And like shifting, you know, as I was saying, Shanti, like if I, you know, what are the solutions? Like, well, first of all, talking about it, because all of a sudden there's no mystique around these. We're seeing these lives that they're living on these yachts for what they are. They're not luxurious at all. They're luxurious for that one picture. So we know that. Yeah, they're not. An illusion. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. You know? And then imagine being having Imagine having, imagine going down into one of these little cabins with some creepy creepster and you know now you've got to put out in the worst way ever. That I just cannot even, makes me want to throw up really. Makes me want to throw up too. And, and from and good men, like I said, my boyfriend, when he was reading the Reddit, he, could hand, he couldn't handle it. So for good men, a good man is not going to tolerate that either. A good man is never going to ask a girl to do something that she's not comfortable with doing. Exactly. Right? You know, exactly. I know there's a lot of, of, of controversy around even when you're in a relationship. I know there's some people that believe if you're in a committed relationship, it's not rape. If you, but I we've had that conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Lisa, Lisa, how dare you make me want to throw up just before supper? Imagine both oh, games. And a wine scene threesome. Oh, listen, listen if um, if, <laughs> if um, if 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 I had to do it with Bill Gates, I think I could just flick him. I honestly think I could overtake Bill Gates. He would drop his. I mean, he's such a. He's I would such just start a laughing. I just point and laugh. I think, and that would get me out of it. Cause I think it would hurt his feelings. I think he was a girl anyway. I think he's a girl that was inverted. Who knows? Even I heard that that Bill and the, his ex-wife are no longer an item. And I agree, Carmen. Stop buying from the BlackRock companies. You know, we got to start supporting each other. Yeah. And um, small businesses. I mean, they they obviously in 2020 tried to take the small businesses out. Find the small businesses instead of going to corporate. You know, just a suggestion. This is not instead of going to like corporate gyms, find the small business owners, find the yoga shala, find the little ballet teacher that owns their own yes. business. Invest in them. You're going to have a better Absolutely. relationship anyway. You're going to have a more um, integral relationship because it's human being to human being. You know, we don't need these fancy cars. My car almost has 200,000 miles on it and I love it. It's great. You know, like we don't need yeah. fancy stuff. 
you, you know? don't need a fancy car. You buy yourself a car that is gets you. I agree. If especially if you know you're traveling a lot, you need something that's reliable. So get yourself a reliable vehicle, maybe the color that you like, because yes, whatever. You know, no one says you can't have a cute little whatever. But at the end of the day, you've got to be able to add, you know, support those that need your support. Yeah. Um yeah. and support the small businesses. And especially at these times, support your community. See what's happening in your community. You know, who's who's in your community. Say, go you to your support. local park and just pick up some yeah. litter if you see it. You know, like, yeah. you know, just I know our Piedmont Park here in Atlanta, that's like our central park. They have all sorts of volunteer programs that you can do to help um, help yeah. the park maintain its, its function. You know, Clearly. you don't need... You don't need to spend money to have fun either. We have this huge Beltline initiative going on here in Atlanta. It's been going on for a few years. Old railroad tracks are turning into a big Beltline. And we love it because you can. we walk it all the time because you can see people. It's very social, you know. Um, I like what you're saying, Carl. We get yourself a blue car so they can't zap it like in Maui. Yeah, it looks to me blue. Blue is the new color, baby. That's, a, that's blue today. <laughs> there's that little song out right now i like this little life of mine i like this little life of mine and it's like you know just love your life love love yeah, exactly. you know it, it's obviously these simplicity is so much better you know i gotta tell you i get up in the morning and i live as you all know i live at the coast and I want to tell you the least I will do is I'll walk on the beach and most mornings I will get in that ocean and I will swim. And I want to tell you there's something about swimming in the ocean. So if you guys can have that, it is absolutely unbelievable because the minute you get out of that ocean, my whole mood has changed. Yeah. And let me tell you, at the moment, life is tough on these channels um oh, totally. we are getting blasted i'm getting threatened around every corner um it's unbelievable what's happening at the moment and i don't really give a shit because i know that i'm pretty much i'm i work for my creator and i do that work so but it's not like they don't try rest assured they will try um but and it's so amazing for me to be able to go and have that time. If you are in that, even if you go for a walk around the block, even if you go to your local coffee shop and have a coffee in the morning, you know, just yeah. to clear your head about even if you just do, but do something that gets you out there and actually changes your mood, changes your frequency. Almost, I mean, I know people have issues with music nowadays, but I, I think always just putting your headphones on and listening to music and just dancing makes you feel better. And I have this, guys. You can find this anywhere. It's the five-minute journal, and you have, like, it literally, you write, like, it has in the morning, it has, I am grateful for you. First thing you wake up, you put three things you're grateful for. So this was from Valentine's Day. I put, I put um, Marty Al Al Alton's bar. I was grateful for her bar classes that morning. I put my dog, Robbie. I put my boyfriend saying down three things when I first woke up that I was really grateful for. What would make today a great day? Then you put three things that, that are in your control, like not things out of your control. And I said, um, I said, time with my boyfriend and my dog, teaching a strong class this morning and listening, finding a good podcast, an, an intriguing podcast to listen to in traffic, daily out affirmation. I always put, I am living a passionate life. So you can, and at night you put your highlights of your day, you know, and it's, it's just five minutes. It's something so simple. You don't even have to order the five minute journal. You can just keep your own journal of every morning, get in the habit of writing everything you're grateful for. And it's going to shift that, that consciousness from lack to abundance where you don't exactly. have to be entertained by the Kardashians anymore. And you know what? If we stop and think of yourself in a less way, because that really is fundamentally, I mean, they make themselves, anyone with these large amounts of money really makes themselves so unavailable to the general public because a, none of them were born like that. No. None of them. They have spent millions on plastic surgery. And do any so, of them and this, actually know who they are? Have any of them actually taken the mo a moment to go inside themselves and to learn who they are? You know, um, it's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. And, and the thing is too, I will say, I, I think I shared this meme on my, um, 
on my on my Instagram, somebody posted and it was like everybody needs to, you know, send send Kylie some PayPal money so we can make her the youngest billionaire. And somebody commented underneath it, this is what's wrong with America. Exactly. We're so obsessed living vicariously through these made up lives, these illusionary lives yeah. of these yacht girls that we can't actually sit back and enjoy the life that we've been given. Who was given five million bucks to spend one night prostituting herself. Listen, now, five I mean, million bucks wouldn't cover it with that guy. He's so gross. I'm sorry. He's so gross. I don't want to think what she had to do for oh. No. Ugh. Anyway, let's not go there. And I love, uh, Carmen, I love your comment. Sean Akers proved 30% more productive just writing down what you are thankful for. Yep. And I'm going to pin that because that is so true. That yeah. is so true, really. And this five-minute journal, they put a lot of, of in the, if you if you get the actual five-minute journal, they put a lot of case studies that shows you, like, your your way of thinking. Like, one case study that was interesting, they, they talked about how they took the same employees for this. There was a, a job where they had a lot of physical activity, like a cleaning job, and they told one set of employees that they were burning all these calories doing this cleaning job. That wasn't necessarily true, but they told them that. And they didn't tell the same thing to the second group. Well, the group they told they were burning all these calories, lost a bunch of weight, or the ones they didn't tell didn't lose weight. They were doing the same job. So it shows you how your thoughts create your reality. And so like with this five-minute journal that I have, the minute you wake up in the morning, you write immediately while you're yeah. sitting still on the bed or while you're sitting on the toilet peeing, you write three things down that you're grateful for. And that could be, it doesn't have to be something elaborate. It could just be, I'm so grateful that I have a warm bed to sleep in. I'm Absolutely. So and what's really that. important, remember your fuel. I mean, your, your emotions are your fuel so that you actually feel. And if you, you know, you know, there's a difference between appreciation and gratitude. And I want to just say this because it's very important. Often, often gratitude, because remember, everything in life is energy. It's frequency, sound and vibration. Very often gratitude was I'm, I'm grateful for my bed. But uh, maybe, or my warm bed, but maybe I've got a leak in my ceiling or something like that, you know. So it kind of like, it, st it stunts that gratitude, right? And that, that stunting, no matter how subtle it's going to be, is, is going to be able to, it, it's going to stop you from flowing. So before you get to gratitude, let's appreciate. Yeah. Now, the first thing I mean, if we look at like how many women, now let's just take women and we are so critical of our bodies, right? So, well, I'm so grateful for my thighs and most women aren't because they are, let's say they have cellulite or they want to lose five kilos or whatever it might be. So I'm saying, no, let's look at appreciating your legs because they carry you around. So let's take it away from the gratitude for my legs because that has a slightly different connotation. Oftentimes, slightly, slightly something we're not that grateful for. But let's look at appreciation. I so appreciate my 10 flexible fingers. Wow. I was about to say too, or especially with body morphic stuff, you know, find a part of your body. If you have a hard time, that's hard for you to like actually start to appreciate things that you've been telling yourself all these years you don't like. What's a part of your 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 body that you actually do like? Like I and then start showing it off. Like I I actually like this my my say I like my my sternum area. I've always been thin up here. I've always so I I enjoy wearing tank tops, right? So why not? Yeah, yeah there are parts of my body I don't like, but I like this. So start to shift the focus on what it, it what is good. What is yeah. it? Nobody has the perfect life. I mean, shoot, even if you sit down today and write, I am so grateful that I'm not a yacht girl. Like, even if you write that down, you know? Yes, that uh, is like, something. That Lisa is Lisa something. Lisa that is something that you can cake. be grateful for. Did you see Lisa D? My first entry chocolate cake is not fattening. Well, you know what, Lisa <laughs> D, it's actually not. You know, what is fat? What, what, when we gain weight, it's when we eat more than we've burned, right? Yeah. Now, there's also health issues involved with certain foods. Right. So, so if you're grateful for chocolate cake, why not be grateful for chocolate cake? 
why not yeah. be, when we have cake typically we're eating cake what is what is it it's it's a celebration like we have cake at birthdays we have cake when we're sitting um when we're sitting at you know a brunch with our friends on sunday sharing a piece of cake so why not be grateful for that moment why not be grateful for the fact that we have we get to come into these bodies and have these taste buds where we can take a bite out of chocolate cookies. and enjoy this enjoy explosion of deliciousness in your mouth for Instead sure. Of being like, Damn, I love eating. I love eating. eating. Maybe, right? Or we take that sip of water, like, oh my God, I'm so grateful I get to live in a in a, an ex experience, a body where I can drink water. Like, so that might be something you could be shoot, write it down. It doesn't matter what you're grateful for. You could be like, I am grateful for chocolate cake. Write that down. I am exactly. grateful that I've got a big hunking man laying beside me in bed. Like you can write all that down. I am grateful that that you know that i that i have the that you know i remember my our pastor i mean one thing he said when i was a kid that i thought was funny and i don't really like many pastors or preachers but he said he said we are so you know in the bible that the lord's prayer it says please give us lord our daily bread but we are so blessed that we now pray for god to take away our bread because <laughs> we're dieting so be grateful for the fact that I have a, for a refrigerator. We went to the grocery store yesterday. I have a refrigerator full of food right now. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I'm so, so many people in the world can't even pick what they want for lunch because they're starving. I can. I can yeah, pick what exactly. I want, you know? So that's something to be grateful Stuff for. Stuff like that, you know, that we generally take for granted. I mean, and as you say, the bed you sleep in, it is such a, the, the duvet, the covers, the soft pillows, yeah. that all the little things that we take for granted, we just go back and just go, wow, what would I do without my duvet? Yeah. What, you know, so I'm really so happy I've got a warm, fluffy duvet. And boy, when the winter night starts chilling down, winter, I mean, uh, bed is my favorite place to be, boy. I'm just like pulling I'll on my warm you. PJs. It is my favorite place to be. So, we got, I'll give you, yeah, that's a perfect one, Shanti. We got a new topper for our bed, like a, like a memory phone. So it makes it super comfortable. We got a few months ago and we had a dog bed in our bedroom and our dog would come back and forth between our bed and the dog bag. The minute we got that new topper, Ravi, we had to throw out his dog bed because he won't get off of our, he, and if you try to move him off our bed, he turns into a gremlin. He growls at you. <laughs> so I am so grateful that I have this amazing, comfortable topper on my bed that not only is comfortable for my boyfriend and me, but my dog feels safe and secure and comfortable as well. Like how grateful. It's so true. Yeah. The little, it's the littlest things, the littlest things. And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something. And you know, when I talk about being threatened as well, um, they, they often come for me at night in my dreams. Yep. That's when they'll come for me. Yep. My cats my cats will sit on top of me during that time boy and we know cats are amazing transformers of energy my cats will not move an inch i mean normally they are so pedantic everyone who's got cats knows like nah, nah, don't take me. you know but boy when they know there's energies that are not cool they are so there and it's like you hear them go mm -hmm, growling and they'll get rid of whatever is there. And it's amazing, you know, and I just go, wow, I'm so grateful for you girls. And I just feel the gratitude flowing out of my heart. And I want to tell you, if anything clears the energy, that does. So little stuff like that, you know, and when we just keep being appreciative, being grateful, even when things aren't going, going our way, it's um what do I learn from this? I'm grateful that there's something I need to see. And I always go, God, show me what I need to see. Show me what I need to see in this situation. And rest assured, I get I get the, the insight, the foresight, the foresight, whatever sight it is that I need to get, I get to see that. So that's where we begin, you know, and just do that, you know, bite-sized chunks, and you'll see that will lead you to other places. So that's our true power. You know, power is not money. It's not strength. It's not how fast our cars are. Power is 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 coming. It's kindness. It's compassion. It's it's all these beautiful emotions that we have that we can care, we can share, we can bring joy to someone else's life. I mean, that's very empowering to be able to do that. So let's start with that. Let's start with that. 
Awesome. Well, on that note, I think it's time to love and leave everybody. And I want to just say thank you so much for joining us on this uh, crazy topic, important topic. You know, as we say, it's really just an, an, an it's not about the yacht girls. That's just one tentacle of what's wrong in the world, in my opinion. You know, where young people are being exploited, young women are being exploited. Um and really for by men with power. And I'm not a sexist at all. You know, those guys are as ignorant. I feel sorry for them as much because to think that you can use your money to abuse another human being, you know, take your money away, take your yacht away and have a conversation with me and show me what you're made of and how many people, how many of those men can actually do that. That's why uh, I always few. dated poor men, Shanti. I've never been, I've never been enchanted by the money. I've always dated poor men. And yeah, <laughs> like, well, I prefer the character of the person over. Yep. Yep. And, and from that place you grow, you know. And yeah. yes, you know, money, money is not money. I'm I'm not saying money is not evil. I'm no, not saying it's the love of money, it's making it. But I wanted yeah. to ask Shanti if, if it's okay with you to turn yeah. this conversation from these putting our attention on these girls. Could our audience like write like in the if it's okay with you, Shanti, because it's your channel, like a, a woman that's done something really magnificent in the world that hasn't gotten appreciation? It could just be like your grandma for having a great sneaker, snicker, snickerdoodle recipe or something, you know, or it could be you know to really focus the value of women away from just sex to to intellect and is that yeah. Because I would love to see like what our audience, if women in their life that they that they've been around. Yeah, please, you know? ladies, pop that in, and gentlemen too. Ladies and gentlemen, pop that in. I mean, or maybe I'd love my to. grandmother because she gave the best hugs and she made me feel safe. Like, what what's a woman in your life that should that you admire and and you venerate? And it had nothing to do with their yeah. sexuality whatsoever. It was just the, the essence of them. You know, I can I can fit oh. Lisa D, <laughs> I can, that's sweet. I can venerate my, my great, great grandmother. I just learned about her, Minnie Hightower, my great, great grandmother who pushed education for women at a time in the 1800s before women even had the, had the, the right to vote. And so I can feel proud of that, 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 that that's my great, great grandmother who did that. You know, and all these years later, I'm the only female in the state of Georgia authorized to teach this particular form of yoga. So to keep that karma going, that we are so much more, we are yeah. our sexuality, absolutely. But that's something sacred that we we choose. We choose who we share that with. Not we don't use it as 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 a spending tool. We choose how, who we share that with. And so, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, I appreciate all the women in our chat and the men in our chat right now because uh, this is what changes. The tides. For, Lisa D. Uh, yeah. I'm so happy, and I will. I'm. Um, I will continue that conversation. Anyway, I mean, it was really an absolute pleasure. So yeah, it's amazing what words can do. You know, one can use your words in such a powerful, positive way, or you can use them to crush someone's spirit. So how do we and actually, choose? I think that's kind of what we're going to be talking about next week on solutions with some, a trial that's happening here in the United States that I wanted to chit chat about with Shanti because it's super interesting. It's a manipulation. This therapist manipulated really good teachings and turned it into something. So yeah, the power is within you to be, to be integral or to be manipulative. Exactly. We have that. And you know, it's uh, Caleb is actually very interesting. He speaks about your, uh, and I had never known this before. And, you know, usually these things I think I know a lot. <laughs> but I didn't know this. Um, your teeth are appetite crystals, okay? Your teeth are, uh, I mean, and obviously your whole body is, is, is comprised of crystals. But your teeth are appetite crystals, which basically means that, what I mean, we understand our words are spell casting, right? Yeah. Spelling, spell casting, etc., and um, so everything that you speak with your teeth is exalted, and it's amplified. So it's so important the words that come out of your mouth or whatever is, you write. Uh, well, it makes me think more about dentistry as well, and I mean that's yes. And thank you for sharing that, and that everyone, and I actually think that was common. A while ago, when I was when we were chatting about stuff, 
every tooth in your mouth is uh, connected to an organ of sorts as well. So when you, we, I mean, every part of your body means something. We know that. But your teeth also are connected to your organs and stuff like wonder that. wonder what so, those wisdom teeth were for that they yanked out of us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love that dragonfly. My mother-in-law, fifth generation historian, highly intelligent and a wealth of information. I miss her so much. Wow, that's very good. Wonderful to have somebody who loves their mother-in-law as well. <laughs> I must say, my mother is one of those mothers. Her children, her in-laws, even the ex-in-laws still love her. I mean, it's absolutely insane to, to think about it like that. I mean, my sister's ex-husbands are always, I mean, my one, my one brother-in-law, I met him, or my ex-brother-in-law, I met him when I was 19. He got married to my sister, my older sister. And he's like being my big brother. And to this day, he lives in the next door town he comes and he makes sure my mother is okay he's here he absolutely loves her he's once a week he'll be uh making sure she's okay if she needs anything you call him if uh he, i mean she my mom's really been sick and he said straight up i'm taking you to the hairdresser <laughs> oh i <laughs> so, love it I love yeah it. it's so cool you know when you have that and you leave that legacy behind you that is just amazing. I know my mother, the day that she finally crosses over, a lot of people will be very, very sad. Um, she's definitely got a got an amazing legacy. But guys, okay, well, I'm going to say, make a note of that for those of you watching. And let's let's chat about that in our next, next week's chat as well. So any amazing woman that you've known, as, as Bryce was saying, it certainly doesn't have to be someone who has done something that's sitting in the Guinness Book of Records, but has really made a difference in a community. Um, you, yeah, you Dragon Slime, I adopted mother, not so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I admire my, my, my little niece because she's spunky and she's funny. Yeah. She doesn't even know she's funny and she's spunky and she's funny and I admire that so much about her. You can you say know, whatever because, she feels like, yeah, oh, and she knows. She knows she she she's a dog. <laughs> but she's gonna be a feisty adult and she's 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 just really funny and she doesn't know she's funny but she just has such a good sense of humor and you know and then she's she's younger than me she's my niece but i just adore, i adore her like i think she is just the bee's knees because she, of her, of her she's beautiful of course i think she's beautiful but her personality is just shines and so i um you know just anything like that like to to, to venerate women for all these other aspects of ourselves that isn't just sexuality yeah, absolutely. Love to hear from you guys about that. So please when we tune in next week um, for uh, into Solutions with Bryce. Yeah, I'd love to hear those stories. If you can just pop them onto the chats, that'll be amazing. It's always nice to talk about these things as well. Yay, beautiful people. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight and or today, this morning, whatever it is for you. For me, it's uh, 7.43 p.m. It's quarter to eight at night. So I'm going to wish you a beautiful day because I know you guys are a few hours behind us in Africa time. We're ahead of you. <laughs> Not often we're ahead of you guys, but yay, time. We're ahead of you. We're lagging. We're coming. So yeah, I'm, I'm about to go eat lunch. After this, I'll be eating lunch. So yes, yes. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. Okay. God bless you all. Bryce, is there anything you'd like to say before we end? No, off? I just can't wait to read everybody's comments. Even though I cannot wait to see like the women in your life that have meant so much to you and just everything that you admire out of them and just see that energy of what you admire about these women. So yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yay. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you all. And I wish you so much health, wealth, and all the abundance you could possibly manage. And again, I want to say thank you so, so much to the Patreons for supporting this channel and Aquarius Rising Africa. Honestly, you guys are amazing. I so, so appreciate you. And, um, yeah, we shall continue to put out whatever we're going to be putting out there. So watch the space and enjoy. Interesting year ahead of us. God bless you guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>